So you know how there's these light switches? Yeah, you can turn it on. You can turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. It's the same for our phones. But it's it can be a tool that's really helpful or it can be a tool of mass distraction. And most of us have gotten in that mass distraction phase. It's like email. Email was a tool that was designed to help us communicate, to help us do our jobs more efficiently, but it didn't come with an owner's manual. It did not also come with the tips and the tricks on how to keep it from taking over, how to keep your inbox from getting to like 10,000 emails. It didn't come with an owner's manual, neither did social media and neither did your cell phone. So I used to have a Spotify premium account and I paid $10 a month to listen ad free. That's what they promise you. $10 a month and you don't have to listen to the ads. And the ads are really annoying. So I unsubscribed from them. And I paid to unsubscribe. You can do this in your email when you're getting emails from companies that you don't want. I don't want any more emails from Ann Taylor Loft or maybe I don't want any more emails from um, a mortgage broker that I had talked to a couple years years ago, then I can unsubscribe and I can design what I see and what I experience. We cannot do this with TV, at least we used to could not. Now we can with Hulu, Netflix. Now I don't have those services, so I'm, I'm speaking a little bit in an assumption space. I don't think that you see ads on a Hulu or a Netflix. So that's good. Radio, again, you really still hear the ads unless you're listening to like a classical station, then you're more than likely still gonna hear ads. With social media, you don't get a choice. You cannot pay to unsubscribe from the ads. Why? Because that's how they make their money. They don't want you to pay necessarily because they're making far more money on businesses paying to promote their post, their services, their products, their page, their whatever. So you don't have the power to design that experience. You can't unsubscribe also from what someone's going to say. I'll give you an example. I used to follow a particular account because I liked the art that she created. Then one day her daughter had an accident and then I saw that for about three weeks. And it was pictures of her daughter in the hospital, stories and um, requests for prayers. And while I'm not saying that I, because I was a prayer warrior for her daughter, I, can't, I didn't get the power to decide if I wanted to see that or not. And I'll tell you, it really it put me in a funk because I was feeling that with her. I was there with her. I didn't necessarily need to be. I don't know her. She lives somewhere in the Midwest. I live in North Carolina. Her church, the, the thing about church in the old days was that that was a community that came and supported someone if something like that happened. Well, our churches have gotten really big and a lot of us don't go to it. So now we've turned to platforms and we kind of talk and share all about our lives and what's going on. I took a quick tangent, but I really wanna talk about this switching on and switching off because we really need to turn off the outside so we can turn on on the inside because an off is also an on when this light switch is down it's also on like it's on a no power when the light is on it's off to darkness kind of a simple little example but it's still worthwhile all the same but when it comes to our own self. There's no actual space. There's no space in our brain. There's no space in our bodies. There's no space in our time from busyness, from always paying attention to what other people are doing or posting to chase a cheer. You know, we get online because we're nosy and then it, it, it starts to backfire on us because then we can start to feel bad about ourselves. Oh, wow. Well, we just went to Myrtle Beach for spring break and they went all the way to Grand Caymans. They must be doing pretty well. And I use that as a really example, simple example, but it happens, it happens to me. I'm sure it happens to you as well. 
So I want to give you a little homework. I want you to delete all the apps that you don't use on your phone. And this might take a while, so you can do it in stages if you want. And on the first screen of your phone, I don't want there to be that many apps. I want there to be maybe eight. And these should be the apps that you use the most often, like text or um, weather or map um, or WhatsApp. You know, you'll know what they are. But they shouldn't be things like news or social media. And then on the second page or the third page of your phone, they're sort of like folders or pages. I kind of think of it like a page in a binder. Flip it and then the second page and the third page, then those apps should be grouped in broad categories like money, travel, watch and listen, uh, exercise, meditate, or mind body. You can kind of think of whatever app categories that you want, but make them pretty broad and then put those apps in there. And then put put some parameters on yourself and as far as when and when you check your phone and when you don't. Maybe you don't check your phone after a certain time in the evenings. Maybe you don't check your phone until a certain time in the mornings. Maybe you don't check your phone on the weekends. The more that we really start to separate, we switch off, the more peace, the more joy, the more present we can become. And from there is really where happiness lives. Um, the phones can be a, a really big joy stealer. So let's switch that off. Let's change that. 